for those of you that um, have subscribed to this project and are watching it regularly and paying really close attention to the details, you no doubt notice that my tendency to drill at an angle where it should be perpendicular to the surface I'm drilling. It's a bad habit. I try to catch it when I can. But on, on this project where I have to drill through the base of the support board and into the 2x4 to connect both support boards, both uprights, um, I used the patio itself as a level and went in that hole that way. And then for the next hole up, I just got a little piece of wood here and laid it underneath there and then laid my drill on top of that and just used that as my level. And that way there's no way I can be crooked. I also took my, uh, my quick square and I measured halfway in from the end so I'd be right in the middle of the 2x4 back here. And I marked it, marked that line with the grease pencil again. These grease pencils are looking like they're coming in very handy for this project. So anyway, that's where we're at and we're screwing the little 2x4s together on this end. And now I just have to go on the other end and uh, do the same thing. Measure, drill, and then screw this piece in. On this uh, taller end, the part that the hot water end is going to be at, um, I actually made the base of this piece longer than that piece over there. And what you might want to do if you decide to do this is actually make them both the same size because when I put the 2x4s across I have to compensate for the extra width by dividing it in half and then moving my 2x4s in that much so that when the 2x4 gets screwed into this wood it'll be square with that with that smaller piece instead of coming out so I would suggest you actually make the base of this one and the base of that one the same width be a lot easier um, these screws I'm using here are three inch screws. It was the longest I had and they seem to be doing okay because once I get this length screwed in it'll go into this board it should hold it fine. But what I did find out is that you know as a female do-it-yourselfer I just didn't have the oomph to actually screw through this wood even when it's drilled and then screw through this board to set the screws. I kept getting a little gap so what I did was I advanced the screws through the screw side here into the wood until I got the I penetrated the wood a little bit and then I took the screws out a little bit and then drilled where the uh, screw holes were showing so that way I have a screwed area going through here and through here should be a little easier for my my uh, female strength to now set the screws in. This, even though it takes a little more work, you for sure will set the screws tight and you won't have a gap. And with about 250, 300 pounds on this structure, you certainly want to have everything nice and tight. Well, I was moving the tank around, I heard rattling coming from inside the tank. And I took a flashlight and looked in one side and uh, I was able to you know, put the light in one side and then look in the other side through the holes and found a bunch of calcium in there. Thank goodness it wasn't anything that was going to stop me from using this tank. So I just uh, stuck a hose in the top and flushed it out the bottom and here's some of what that looks like. It's best to get that all out of here because we certainly don't want it building up and clogging up our, uh, our, uh, hot, our hot out line. Got about a cup, of, cup and a half of calcium built up out of there. Okay. Now I'm just measuring my wood and I went to run a piece from this side, this top piece to this top piece. And as it turns out with this project, it's three feet uh, that these are spaced. How did I come up with three feet? Well, I stuck my, my up brackets uh, in the red box and then took this bar which uh, simulated the water heater and stuck it in the uprights and then saw where it uh, where the hot end was hitting, the cold end was hitting and then I marked with a grease pencil again the bar and so that's where I stuck my uh, that's how I know the length of my wood to put in 
without having to use the tank hole that tank in and out was just this far. So that was my measuring stick. My guardian angel put that bug in my ear, I think. Well, if any of you have kids, you heard about the story about the three bears. Too cold, too hot, I just right. Well, too short, too long, none just right. We're going to have to cut. Make sure this is nice and straight. So I'm bubbling the, bubbling it. Ah, dead on center. That's exactly where we want to have it. You know, working on a project around the house is all well and good, but when it comes time for a water and a loving break, it just got to happen. You want a smarty? Huh? You want a smarty? Yeah, you little doggy. Love you. Hey, well, I'll go get you one of your chicken snacks. How would that be? I don't think you should have that candy. Okay. That is the last screw to go into our water heater tank holder. It's done assembling. And now we're just going to paint it with the barbecue heat resistant spray paint. Let it dry, apply a second coat, and uh, this will be ready to set into the bread box. And uh, as far as I can tell, the next thing will be plumbing up the uh, water tank. So that's exciting. We're really getting there. We're, the next step coming up pretty soon is plumbing the water tank into the system. And the inside of the kind of water tank that, that, I, that I have out there, uh, it has two different pipes lengths coming in from the top. This is a hot water feed, or actually the hot water outlet, and it has a shorter pipe. And the cold water inlet, the dip tube is longer, it goes all the way down to there. But what I need to determine is which is which on my tank out there, because all I have are just the two the two little nipples out there. Um, so I gotta find which one is shorter. The shorter one has to go on top so all the hot water can go into there first. The longer one has to go on the bottom closer to the ground huh, when I mount the tank so the cold water can go in on the bottom and the because it'll be laying like this and then the hot water will rise to the top and go out the hot water too. If I have it reversed, all the cold water will be coming in and flowing over the hot water and then the hot water tube would be on the bottom collecting the cold water, which you don't want. So um, I kind of have an idea how to do it. We'll have to try out my idea, see if it works. What I did is I took this wire and I bent it. Uh, I have a handle on one end and a little hook on the other. So I'm going to see if I can fit this down into the tubes. Whoops, too big. Gonna have to make it smaller. I can't really see down into there. My hook, is, oh, it's hitting something right away. And this one has like a little screen on it. Hmm, so I can't get my hook in there at all to see which one is hot and which one is cold. So what I did was I got a smaller, um, I got a smaller wire and I made a smaller hook and I ran the wire down in each of the tubes as far as it'd go. And uh, on one, the wire ended here at this mark, and on another one, the wire ended there. So that meant one of them was the hot and one was the cold. So I marked it, the hot, the hot has to be upward in there. And it just so happens, see, experience is a good teacher, it turns out that the overflow valve is on the hot side. So that's a confirmation. 